The Chi River watershed has been heavily impacted by acid mine drainage from abandoned mines for years, but recent efforts by the DEP and local watershed groups have been showing slow but steady results treating acid mine drainage at its source and bringing sections of the Cheat River watershed back to life. Now a new partnership with an energy company is looking to bring more miles of stream back from the dead. The DEP's Mike Huff has more. Do not attempt to adjust your set. The water and the rocks in the stream are really that orange. This is Ficky Run, arguably the most acid mine drainage impaired stream in all of West Virginia. Ficky Run flows into Martin Creek, which adds its own acid load to a larger stream called Muddy Creek as it flows another three and a half miles downstream to the Cheat River. Below the mouth of Martin Creek, Muddy Creek is, is dead. There's absolutely no, no living organisms in uh, Muddy Creek below Martin. Upstream of Martin Creek, roughly 12.2 miles, it's, it's a viable fishery. We've got a, a, a healthy trout population, uh, partly due to the stockings of a local uh, hunting and fishing club upstream. But as I said, downstream is dead. The contrast is stark. You can see it as the waters from Ficky Run and Martin Creek mix with the water in Muddy Creek. Acid mine drainage is formed when water and oxygen react chemically with iron sulfite that's found in the shales above and below coal seams. It's a common problem in this part of West Virginia. Historically, the, the, the area has been uh, mined for years. We've got mines that probably date back to early or late 1800s. So it, this area has been uh, well over mined and unfortunately generated a lot of uh, acid mine drainage. As water percolates down through that sulfur-bearing material in and around the coal seam and infiltrates the mine pool, a chemical reaction causes acid to form. The water that flows out of the mine lowers the pH of any receiving stream it flows into, eventually killing all the aquatic life. As the pH drops, metals dissolved in the water begin to precipitate out. First, aluminum when the pH reaches around 5.5. And then, as the water becomes even more acidic, iron, with its characteristic rusty orange staining, begins to drop out. And that's why, just downstream from the mouth of Martin Creek, this massive new water treatment facility, the TNT Fuels Project, is being built along the banks of Muddy Creek. Work at the site began in January. The goal of the project is to bring the lower section of the creek back to life, using a new approach to tackle an old problem. And as part of that project, our staff in Special Reclamation started looking at uh, opportunity to improve the watershed as a whole. So we'll be doing some treatment in stream, but in order to do that, we need to capture some of the acid mine drainage that's higher in the watershed so that we can treat it properly at the larger facility. So what we'll be doing is capturing some water um, from abandoned mine land um, seeps, and we will be carrying it through a pipeline about two and a half miles downstream to the TNT facility for treatment. And that's where Southwestern Energy comes into the picture. Southwestern is providing the funding to build the pipelines to the treatment plant and contributing to its future operation and maintenance costs. It's part of the company's Freshwater Neutral Initiative. Of course, water is very integral to what we do. So um, as part of our culture, really, we add value to the communities in which we operate. And that means sometimes economic value and, and environmental value, too. So you look at water and how much water that we use in our operations and, and um, wouldn't it be great to be freshwater neutral? And of course that comes from conservation and reuse and recycling of water. But it also comes from conservation offset, which is where we add volumetric flow to the basins. And, and when I say freshwater neutral, it's not something that is, um, you know, some highfalutin mantra. It's, it's measured and it's audited and it's real. So we will get credits for this, this additional water flow that we're adding to the basin here. That works out to about 1,200 gallons per minute that will be piped into the treatment facility. Or to put that into perspective, enough acid-tainted water to fill the average home in-ground swimming pool in under 10 minutes. Once inside the plant, the water will be treated with a lime slurry to raise the pH, and then passed through two 80-foot clarifiers that will remove all the metals. 
The treated water will then flow back into Muddy Creek, neutralized and free of metal contaminants. The treatment facility that we're um, constructing right now is a much larger, more complex treatment facility than what we've used previously. And this is something unique that we have not tried in the past. And so we're very excited to see um, if we can be successful and utilize this program in some other watersheds. In a year or two, this will be a viable fishery. We'll have fish migrating up from, from the Cheat River and down from the upper reaches of, of Muddy Creek. It'll increase the uh, outdoor recreational uh, uh, opportunities, not only from a fishing standpoint, but from rafting and you know, kayaking, possibly camping. So there's gonna be a lot of opportunities just by cleaning up this, this watershed. And it's that whole watershed approach that makes this project so different. Picking up the acid mine drainage as it leaves the mine and before it has a chance to enter the stream. Without doing that, without collecting both the AML pre-law acid mine drainage, the project won't be a success. We're going to be recovering miles of stream rather than discharging compliant water into, into a dead stream. If you come back five years from now and we did not take this alternative approach, Muddy Creek would still be dead. For us, the benefit of working with Southwestern is that we are able to um, get the cost of the, the pipeline construction covered and also, um, as I mentioned, some operation and maintenance uh, treatment of the water for a few years. It will actually um, help the abandoned mine lands program a great deal because they were going to be funding the treatment of the, the um, pre-law uh, acid mine drainage waters, and this will kind of give them uh, a, a little bit of a break on the, the cost for that um, to their program as well. Um, so it, it will just enable us to um, uh, probably do some uh, more things in that watershed than, than what we could have um, done if we were just working on our own. It's been quite a journey just out today tracing the source of it, right? We're like oh look, those are orange rocks, those rocks aren't supposed to be orange, and then we follow it and follow it and go, you know, a little bit upstream and a little bit upstream and it gets oranger and oranger and oranger and, and of course no sign of any aquatic life anywhere. Um, so it's disheartening really to see the condition of the stream, but it's also exciting to think, you know, we can make it better. In Preston County, I'm Mike Huff for Environment Matters. The project is expected to be completed and online by the end of the year.